Hello everyone and welcome back. So I didn't actually expect to make this video until someone in the comments, uh, specifically Cloud PvP, I'm shouting you out, uh, mentioned a tutorial in a Fall A mode, or hardcore mode I should say, and I figured this would be helpful to do so, and so here we are. I'm not going to really talk much about my leave of absence from YouTube, uh, that's for a different video, so let's get right into it. So when you first start, you really want to think of where to set up and make a game plan, not only for short term, but also long term. So thinking and picking the right map that has a lot of stone like we have right here, uh, five stone in a circle, which is about 20,000 stone and three stone deposits far away, which we really have to reach for about 12,000 stone. I think this right here is a good map to work with. So. How I play is imagine how and what the kingdom is going to look like and think of how it's going to work and how you can do a little shortcuts on some things but not others, advantages and disadvantages of your play style. Right here, advantages, resources, disadvantages, docks because I plan on putting my castle right here and now my docks is going to be farther away or I have to make a little water bridge thing. <laughs> which is a disadvantage, but I, I've i played before without a dock, so I'm going to flex and say we're going to do it the hard mode, just in case you guys don't have access like I do, then this, this is going to work out well, because we're planning for the worst. So, um, I scouted this map originally already, so we have the advantage of that, and we're just going to start and place it somewhere around here. So the start I would say is always important and I say this because I believe it can make or break a run. So while what we're going to do here is our normal gameplay which is going to be different since I normally have a space in between the castle and the homes but this time it's just going to be a pathway and we're going to really emphasize resources and collecting and managing them along with stone in particularly and what really hurts people especially in this kind of gameplay is, you know, their lack of believing stone isn't as important because their stone in this version is very important. Now, there are workarounds like getting a dock, but like I said, it's not going to really work out well for us since it's far away. So pushing for a dark early game might not always work. So what we're going to do is really use this time to really set up defenses because I believe we have the advantage of close resources where we can really propel ourselves forward as quick as possible. And as you can see, they're already done cutting out trees, making all the homes possible. And we're going to really, once these two trees are cut, we're going to make a farm. Now we're going to have an open treasury and we're going to use some of the walls that surround it wood because you really want to think of ways that you can really cut back on stone so you have as much as possible so you can really stretch it out for that 250 years or maybe even longer so i am going to do the money push plan where you raise the tax rates and you get a lot of money but you also have to look on happiness but i do plan on showing that in the future and i do plan on explaining my plan a little bit more possibly on the next time we cut back in so always make sure you guys are always doing something with advantage of this quick wood you can use the same map that i have i'm going to post this in the description hopefully i remember future me if you're watching this i swear to god if you did not this is going to be suffering for many people So we have everything set up now and I arrange things the way they are so I can quickly gather resources stored and collected as quickly as possible. Now we what we want to do is how we're going to go do this going forward. So I have my treasury up so what we're going to do is do the uh, money thing I said last um, before we cut in last time. So what we're going to do. We're going to wait for that to finish because I actually do have a mod installed I actually totally forgot about, but it's the Place Fellers Anywhere. I highly recommend that mod, especially for new people. So what you want to do, have a treasury, and then what you want, next what you want to do, raise the tax rate to 60% and keep an eye on happiness. So it's going to go down to 25%. We are going to stop it when it hits about 
40%, maybe 35. And then what you want to do is lower the tax rate. So you get a big influx of cash and then wait for happiness to gain itself back up to ours was 65 and then do it again for quick money. So we do have 15. I'm actually going to wait for defenses because um, I feel like that is very important. And we have about 20. And what we want to do is place an archer tower because I believe that is the best way possible. Now we are going to go down a little bit more. And 35. We're going to go down to 10%. And then what we're going to do is repeat that till we actually have a decent income of money. Now, another thing I want to bring to mind is... As you can see already, I didn't use stone walls, and normally I would in my videos, but I didn't. Uh, let's actually make sure this is properly set up, and let's make sure the tools are down. And let's ask ourselves a question, where can we cut back on stone? And one of them was right here. I have a tendency to always put this with uh, stone, but I instead replaced it with wood, because that's a nice place we can cut back on. Now... One of the things I planned on is where, what am I going to do about ballista towers? Well, ballista towers are still going to be the two by two giant towers that are going to stop the dragons. And where am I going to place them? Right here. And I'm, I'm going to sound like a nerd, but detail matters. And where you play, place things are important. My focus is defense on our farm. And that's going to be right here because dragons are going to target it. If you did not know, they normally target farms. So now that we have a place to cover because it's going to cover the farm and also our town. How are we going to save our stone? Well, I'm not going to use any real walling except for wood walling. And... That's a great way I think we can cut back on stone and really make it stretch out as long as possible if we do our defenses just right. Now, money is currently somewhat of an issue, but that's all right. Just do this because you do need to consider that manners, churches, and everything like that also need stone. So how are you going to play this out? Are you going to play a small gameplay or you're gonna try to expand as much as possible through that 250 years and challenge yourself we're gonna just go kind of basic and in between the two we're gonna take things slow but we're still gonna build even beyond and try to challenge ourselves but staying low like this and really stretching it out year 11 out of 250 it can work. I've actually seen a lot of people do that just to beat it the first time and get the victory Valkyrie, which is what you get, and just win that way. And as you can see, the advantage of having resources close by, look how quick this is being built. Now, let's place our stockpile and think of our next plan. So I do want a dock. So what I might do next is make a pathway from up here to down here connected to a dock well what am i gonna do i'm gonna make foresters all along here and then what i'm also gonna do is have charcoal makers and i'm gonna sell the charcoal which gives me money so if you want an easy money production selling charcoal is an easy way especially early game so what i want to also do is change all these the manners and also kind of expand our defenses with wood walls Thankfully, the dragon does not attack at the beginning. However, we do have the issues of Vikings and them being a little bit stronger. Now, if you didn't know, if you have a treasury out with nothing covering it, Vikings have a high chance of going for it instead of burning everything else. So let's watch what happens here. And just like that, they went for it and he's down. Now, this is going to be a little problematic since we didn't want that to happen. But we took care of that one instantly, and this should not be destroyed. Yep. Now, this is also problematic, because normally I would have my buildings cut in half to prevent fires from spreading, which is what I do in normally almost all my videos. However, I would say this is a successful defense. Yes, we have minus three trauma, but this helps a lot. And you know how? Guess what? I can move it up to 60%, and my happiness is going down to 48 something i can live with 
this is how you plan for things and adapt and just like that it worked we're gonna get tons of money now as you can see and now our food needs to increase which is going to be something we can easily do to how we set up our place add another orchard and start expanding down here increase to 51 even better and it's going to be pretty much being very careful how you play the game because this tutorial is going to show how i play the game but also give you the tips tricks and really the precautions of how you want to play this mode and hopefully you learn something from this and you beat it yourself all right guys so we built all the stuff we really wanted and now how do we progress so you might have an issue with population i literally just had one so there's a lot of ways of going about it and i'm going to be talking about the base game statistics and stuff like that which is fine so what you want to really do is either make a church a festival or a food hall well i'm going to be focusing on a festival which is a really good um building which i normally ignored and then recently started using so if you have a population cap because you know food is a little bit more difficult and you know you need people but you're starving and you can't really get the people you can get it this way and it might it does cost money but that's fine it's worth it now you might be thinking how are you going to continue forward knowing that it's going to be kind of scary knowing that stone might run out having a low production of stone helps you really think things through and i say this because once you find a hundred dollars you're gonna want to spend that hundred dollars well if you slowly use the two quarries you can even put one on each if you in case you want to it really helps you really think things through with the low income of stone while yes i did stock up on mine i'm pretty careful with it i do you know sometimes fail with it but I, you really have to think things through and take your time playing this game or else you're going to be putting yourself in a position you don't want to be in. And right here, I'm doing this because I planned on doing it, which is fine. And also, I think the dragon's coming up in five years. So let's get this up a little bit more. I think we might be able to get this. Now, I do have a food issue. Just please ignore that. <laughs> so you shouldn't be continuing that little money boost you should just be trying to progress yourself slowly so one thing i recommend doing you could use all those hovels if you want i highly don't recommend that because they catch on fire easily you want these they're bigger they help with more money output and stuff like that now this guy he is really close to this which i am definitely going to most likely move off camera but you really just want to take your time and i'm emphasizing that because if you rush into things you might survive, but if you want to go on beyond 250 years, you might not make it. So currently, after 30 years, we hit about 600 stone in each one of them, which is good after 30 years because we still have two over here, three down here, and one over there. So if we're really careful with it, we can really make this stuff last. Now, still don't go around building stone stone um excuse me <laughs> stone roads my my brain just blanked because that is five stone each and that is a lot so really just find ways to cut back on stone and put it where you think is most important like right here these ballista towers because hey they have the range to even protect your town your farms and against the vikings now i only have one of these right here still and we have a viking attack so this is going to go pretty well and if you know about the cemetery trick where you can delete cemeteries to make more room by placing more don't do that because stone it costs stone to make cemeteries i'm not joking uh i've actually seen someone do that and waste about 500 stone doing that so right here it the plan's working and should continue to work When continuing, you might be tempted to use the stone on buildings you may not need 
And one of these examples are windmills. So uh, I could make 20 windmills for easy food, true. However, I most likely could find a different way. So I made a large reservoir. And that in turn helped with making large fountains. And I can lessen my need or worry of water. And I can just easily place homes with no problems at all. So... You have to be really careful on not overusing certain buildings and i know i placed a um, church right here but i found it better that a fountain was here instead which then i moved and made a library instead which you know comparison 30 stone compared to 85 that's a 50 difference and i so far made two libraries which i feel like if you keep making shortcuts like that you can definitely make a big impact I did make a baker, which, you know, it's pretty nice. And I want to make another charcoal maker. <laughs> so here's what we have so far on year 40. And we just have to survive. I did use, make additional towers to defend my locations. Now, I am going to make more ballista towers like this, possibly over here. Actually, yeah, I will make it over here so it can just kind of get like both dragons and a pierce. So we're going to do that right now. And like I said, this is one of those things I believe are the most important because if we're going to be here surviving for the long term, we're definitely going to need this. And a donk, I believe, is also super important. Just keep that in mind so we can possibly get stone. Yes, I only had about like 17 stone from it. But the more you use it, the more it's going to go up and possibly more fully. Eh. <laughs> My brain is dying because I just ate and I haven't done YouTube in a while. But so having focusing your stone on defense is important, but don't have it overused on like two different large reservoirs. You really just want to strategically place one reservoir so that you can really just have the most of it. And so far, I've been placing my food actually on this place right here. Now, we are having a little issues, and I highly recommend to remember, keep your eye on your job priorities. Like right here. <laughs> I let it go a little bit, and I'm regretting it. So, bakers. And as you can see, we definitely need a lot more homes, and it's just... A lot to focus on here. So when continuing, you may be tempted to use uh, walls for any sorts of purpose. Well, I'm going to tell you how to properly use your walls. So you really want to just make wood walls. Now, here I am right now walling off my base so i might just keep this base and survive for 250 years i'm not sure i might actually expand and if i do i can easily do so knowing that this part the area that's more important and self-sufficient is alive now i actually looked away from happiness so we are at a point where we need to start focusing on other buildings like um <clears throat> like um the bathhouse so Keep that in mind for later. Now, our walls right now are pretty good, I would say, because currently they do the job that they're needed for right now, which is just holding them off. Now, I suggest when you make walls like these that you make fountains around because just in case, it might need the water because it can easily be burned. Now, right here is a good example of why my ballista towers are important, and I didn't even have them fully upgraded. I mean, fully up, which is kind of a regretful moment right here since now everything's on fire. However, I do recommend fire brigade so they can also help with the walls catching on fire. Now, you might not like wood walls, but if you want to save as much resources as possible, I feel like they are highly suggested. Suggested, my bad. So also, just like keep a heads up, 200, I mean 2,567, and we are on year 51. 
which is pretty good. So another year, we're still going to have another deposit, which means it's going to be 100 years. And that means we can just switch over to a different stone pile to siphon stone off of. I did start these. So you can see um, I am in trying to push for stone a little bit more, mainly for my defensive towers, which I recommend you put them on almost every corner. And you also put a moat in front of your stone walls. Why? Well, if, number one, it's access to water if you need it. And then number two, it's also a really good defense, especially in a scenario where, yes, your archers, archer towers are a little bit more vulnerable, which then even a little bit of time would matter. Because over here, the Vikings were trying to hit down this wall, but they were also attacking the wood castles. So what I also like doing is making at least one or two layers from the wall, because then it gives the chance for villagers to get water from right here, and then they can easily pour it on there, and it also buys them time if need be. Now, you could also double layer the stone wood wall and then add a moat, which I've done before in a different hardcore series which was actually pretty fun i believe it was my first one i've ever done and that is not good <laughs> so just that pretty much the summary here is use wood walls use everything you can like moats double the walls if need be to buy more time upgrade them all to the highest they can be pretty much just use wood walls We're a little farther along now. We're about year 69. So one of the things I do want to talk more about on defense is the use of barracks. So all it really needs is... I, I, I highly recommend you try using soldiers more often. And if need be to supplement, you can have archers. Because these are pretty much like unlimited amounts of defense. And yes, they do cost money and manpower it can be very beneficial here in their regards. So let's actually fix some of our problems really quick because I went to do something. So basically, we we can, so now that we're in the later stages, we're not dealing with ogres because we did not put up gates yet. So we have to deal with catapults. Now, one thing I recommend doing is making at least one or two soldiers. Um, one is fine. And then what you want to do is you can keep your defenses the way they were, but I kind of want to make a four corners type of deal. And my everything is starting to fall apart. <laughs> oh, that's lovely. So... What we want to do here is sort of kind of increase our defense and our output of resources. Now that we're later of game, we want to really push, but also be careful, like I keep saying, at the same time. So, I did push for about 800 pop. I want to go for about 1,000 and keep it there because I know someone said they had trouble with about 500 uh, if I check my comments correctly. So my defenses have been pretty good and now now we have a soldier and then you we, I could have kept this way however I wanted more defense against dragons and I also forgot something to say don't really make a library because you can possibly just get your technology from the boat instead at a very discounted price. Uh, I actually got um, the Sharper Arrows one, <laughs> and it was only about 500 instead of like 150 and waiting a day or like three days and make, wasting 400 stone. Like, 400 stone is quite a lot. And just to give you a recap on our stone, we hit about year 71, and we now just broke about 2,000, which means 70 years, and these two are still kicking. That one actually is still doing way better too. And I I honestly could be more aggressive with my approach, but I'm very conservative right now to show you guys how being careful and you know if you really need to, you can use the stone for different purposes if you want to really stretch it out late game. Currently, we're doing really well with this wooden wall idea. Now, right here is going to hurt because I don't have any ballista towers, but thankfully we made soldiers to counteract the catapults. Now, this right here is not good, and I didn't really focus on defense in this area, which is kind of my mistake. Um, but we are... Oh. 
Okay, there we go. Uh, what are you doing? But anyway, so we have soldiers to fix that problem down there. Now, the, they aren't really doing that well up there. And this was kind of a mess since they all focused right here. But it honestly could have been worse because only one home was destroyed. Um, which was not a good thing to happen right here because of you do have to worry about instances where they all would drop right here now we did lose some it's, i'm not gonna cry about it that much but it still wasn't a good matter and you really just gotta think and be ahead of the game for example these knights came in clutch to stop that catapult and i highly recommend if you watch this to really think about making foot troops so you can deal with the catapults and stuff like that thankfully my um my ballistas have been taking care of them pretty well. Now, I believe the way I'm going is at 250 years, these two will be gone, but these two will really hold out for a long time, and I just need these four compared to the other three. It's pretty good. Now, I have been focusing on buying and selling a lot. Now, the problem with this strategy is you know you have to know how to properly finance your money and manage your resources properly because if you don't you're going to have a big mining crisis and i almost had that had that crisis not too long ago so just a warning um really keep an eye on your money and know when to really um back off when to turn off the towers because you, you might have to do that with this i'm not fully sure um if unless you're lucky which i'm not most of the time so um, I did make a statue, so I feel like if you really make want to and you want to increase your happiness, really put it in the best possible area. And I can't stress that enough because I've seen people just make towers and be like willy nilly here, here, here. It, it's like it's it hurts to watch sometimes and then they don't do well and then they they just fumble the bag pretty much. But I do again stress the idea of moats and anything that you can use use it just do not use gates because then you're going to be dealing with ogres honestly better to deal with catapults than ogres in this air in this um mode so right here we're doing really good if i just enclosed all of this right here we would be doing so great right now honestly i wouldn't mind moving this down over here maybe like right here a little bit more but we're still doing pretty fucking good now, what I want to do is still continue pushing because some people, like they, like I keep saying, they want to, they want to get past 500 people and they don't want to play the, make a small base and then just stretch it out for two, two hours or three hours or more, depending on how long you take. Now, I, un I agree with that. It's, it's not fun, but it still gets the job done. So I'm going to try to help you, um, try to push more out and show you how I do it so that you can do it yourself or try to mimic what I do since you know it is kind of hard it takes a lot of thinking critical thinking and kind of experimenting on what works I didn't get this right away and I don't expect you to as well but if you do good job so as you can see we are currently pretty where we pretty much where we want to be so this is pretty much you know a kind of walkthrough guide and so currently down at the bottom 100 1500 bets all we have to do keep keep up the festival and then we got it so i have little pockets i normally do this for game like different games where i make different like little bubbles here so in case all one place goes down the main part is still fine like shielded I consider it as another wall and we are still good on stone this one is actually still kicking and we're actually near halfway mark and this stone is gonna survive halfway through same with this one over here and we and this is pretty much a conservative guide to like resources on how to properly manage it because one of the main ways of like 
getting really good at this game is just managing your resources because these little pockets they have about they're about eight by four and they hold about eight homes and let's see that's about 25 each right so this is about 100 100 100 100 so 400 400 so 400 in each one of these bubbles and i have little wells on each side so it's not really consuming on stone if we had one of these guys here which is kind of you know ouchies um <laughs> and i'm also diving a little bit more into the food our food is getting a little low but we can easily fix that by adding more wheat right here and berries we should be fine so Pretty much, I'm just going to end it here, even though it's going to be 125 years or 124, however you want to see it. But this is pretty much how you beat hardcore mode. And to summarize everything, basically, manage your resources, think of what really works, and what you can really just find ways around. Like, walls, you don't have to use stone, you can really, not really stone paths only focus on buildings really the use for stone instead of making churches make libraries um instead of having towers like these for your archer towers just have ballista towers and then you know if you want to you can add little things like this because currently i'm in a zone now where i can go away and do something which i have been i actually been doing homework on the side and just let this game run i'm year 124 look at where i'm at i could honestly go even farther <clears throat> and i haven't even used one res one full stone yet like this still has around 400 this still has over 1000 yeah like over almost 2000 3000 3000 kind of rounding it like we still have yet to touch these three and we've only touched these four and one is only about to go down now so if you're really aggressive, then I guess it can work. If you want to be a little bit more... If you want to use more stone, because we can easily put like a one of those ballista towers over here to prevent that dragon from doing what he just did. But, you know, I'm kind of okay with not doing that. I can easily just replace the tower. We need another bathhouse. Well, that's no problem because I just sat on my stone. You don't have to really use the resources because it's not going to go away. And remember to always use your docks and find cheeky ways around not using stone. That's pretty much all I got. I know it just might not be, this might not be what people really want on how to help them with hardcore mode. But this is somewhat, when I tried thinking about how I want to go about this, it's kind of hard to structure a video like that, especially for me when I'm just getting back into YouTube after my little hiatus. But it was a good idea, and I hope if you watch this that you really took something from what I said, what I showed you, and you you do it. You beat it. You get the victory Valkyrie. Honestly, show it to me on Reddit. <laughs> I don't know if I'm going to be posting this video anytime soon, but hey. Thank you for watching. Hopefully I helped you in any way possible. And if you want to follow my footsteps and try to do exactly what I did, I'm going to hopefully have the seed down in the description or up on the video. I'm not sure which, but we'll, we'll find out when I do it if I'm not lazy. But it, well, with enough said, thank you for watching and see you guys next time.